Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for this Feast of the Holy Trinity that I will preach on is from Isaiah, chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. The train of his robe filled the temple. This is the text. You may be seated. The prophet Isaiah experiences a revelation of God. The high and mighty, the unshakable view of God, it arrives in a timely moment. Isaiah 6 gives us the context. King Uzziah has died. And in the same year of this king that had ruled for 52 years, the Lord reveals to Isaiah that he remains unshakable, high, and lifted above all. And this moment of contrast is so important for Isaiah in that time when our earthly visions, the things we see in this world, are not always as strong as we want them to be. We are reminded to always to look to God, who is strong for eternity, is rescuing for eternity and is sending forth his love into this world for eternity. King Uzziah, he's described in 2 Kings chapter 15 there by the spelling of Azariah. He's identified as a good king who followed after the ways of his father David. But the high places were not taken down. People still sacrificed and made offerings at these high places. In 2 Chronicles 26, because remember, kings and chronicles largely tell similar parts of the events. In 2 Chronicles 26, there he is referred to the spelling that we've got here in Isaiah, Uzziah. And he's described as a good king, but later, as he started to gain in confidence, there's this note that in his pride, he entered the temple in order to burn incense. Well, that sounds notable, but that wasn't his job as king. He was trying to take over the work of the priests. He was trying to be everything rather than trusting the mission that God had given him to do as king. He not only tried to do his job, he tried to do everybody else's job as well. The priests, they stepped in. In fact, in 2 Chronicles 26, it took a number of priests, about 80 of them, to step forward and stop King Uzziah from offering the incense. The way we know that this was not something he was supposed to do is that it says he was struck down with leprosy and then he spent the rest of his life living alone. So Isaiah 6 takes place in a time when a king who had been this great king and yet had this falling down moment, during this time of weakness when the people are in need of strength, Isaiah sees the Lord sitting upon his throne, high and lifted up, and with his robe keeping the whole temple filled, his train. It, it's going to be true. Every generation is going to learn this. That earthly kings, our earthly rulers, those that we, we will lift up on our pedestals, they will fall apart. And when every act of power and pride, when that moment arrives, it can be really hard to wonder who else can you trust. We are at a time in general in Western society, they say, when institutional trust is at an all-time low. This is one indication why there's an increasing number of young people going to church but not joining a church. They want to be able to be present in that spiritual enriching moment, but not ready to trust that institution, having known so many churches or leaders or pastors fall apart as well. I want you to contrast whatever you may have in your mind of, of those who are in power in this world and put that into some contrast with what we see about God. He's high, he's lifted up, and the people around him are crying out, holy, holy, holy the seraphim, these holy angels. And all of this about God is always true. God is always almighty. 
no matter what is going on in this world, this remains a truth that will always be true. But I can't, I can't always see it. John chapter 3, verse 3, this conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, Jesus highlights this detail. He says, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. No one can see how God is at work in this world without the Spirit opening their eyes. Without the Spirit opening our eyes, our eyes are left only to see what is being built up in this world. But I want to see. I want to see what God is building up. I want to see by the power of the Spirit how God is at work. I want to be able to have that hope every day that even if things are falling apart, God remains true. And if you find yourself wanting to have that hope, and you find yourself on some days more angry or more disappointed or more just feeling like things are collapsing around you, and you've got that, that vision in front of you that things are falling apart, if that becomes predominant, I ask you, please, pray for the Holy Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit to work upon your heart the same way that the Spirit worked upon Isaiah, bringing him into this revelation. Because God does not design for us to see the world only as a place that is falling apart. God has designed for us to have this confidence that the kingdom of God is at work. Isaiah sees the kingdom of God in his visions. That's what I need to I need it to be true that God is at work. Because I believe that with this confidence that God is at work comes an invitation. With the confidence that God is at work, and as I see that truth, there is an invitation to now let my days be a part of that work as well. When Isaiah sees this vision of the holiness of God, he now starts to see his sin. He says, woe is me. I am lost. I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. When you start to see the truth that God is at work, you may at first think that it's moving faster than what you can move. It's hard to get on a moving train. It's hard to get on to something that's already in momentum. And you may feel like you're stuck still in a moment and how can you get on to that train of God working woe is me I am lost and it's already moving on but in this revelation of God as God reveals the truth of who he is this identity isn't meant to be shaped by what you aren't woe is me Isaiah says but God seeks to shape your identity in what he delivers to you. Because what Jesus told Nicodemus is something that God desires for all of us, to be able to see the kingdom of God. It's only possible if you're born again from above. And what does God do with Isaiah? He sends the seraph from the altar with the live coal upon the tongs and touches Isaiah's lips, and lips that are made whole. With Isaiah, though he may be dead in his sin, he's now made alive together with all of those that get to see the kingdom of God at work. The Spirit of God does this. He opens our eyes. He opens our eyes to see our sin, yes, but not to feel stuck in our sin. God opens our eyes to see our sin and to discover our forgiveness. John 3, 17. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In this moment of confession, there is absolution. In this moment when there is an acknowledgement that he is a sinner, there's an invitation to become a part of what the kingdom of God is doing, bringing forgiveness into this world. And the boldness of forgiveness... Isaiah finds mission. He says, here am I. Send me. I want each one of you to see each day how the kingdom of God is at work.
find the truth that the Spirit has opened your eyes. And indeed, it's been true all along. God is at work. And in that confidence that God is at work, don't see it as just a truth that moves on by while you stay stuck. Find in this identity and promise that God is at work an invitation to be a part of his mission. I want you to maybe see this, how it's illustrated with Nicodemus. So John chapter 3, that's our gospel text for today. It says, Nicodemus arrives in the dark. The next time, the next time we hear about Nicodemus, he's not stuck in the dark anymore. The next time you hear about Nicodemus is when Jesus has died on the cross. He has cried out, it is finished. He's breathed his last. Now Nicodemus is in the light, and he's not alone. Joseph of Arimathea is with them, and Nicodemus and Joseph, they take the body of Christ down from the cross, and they place him in that tomb. Friends, you and I, we are invited by God to be a part of bringing this kingdom into the world. We do not serve in the dark alone. We serve in the light, even as there is suffering, even as there is dying, even as there is a breathing of the last. Nicodemus knew it was not the last, because he was not stuck in that moment of the cross. He found in that moment of the cross an invitation. The kingdom of God is at work. Sin is defeated, and life is arriving. Maybe I hope that what you see each day as well. The sin is defeated and life is arriving. Amen. Please now stand and join in the prayers of the church.